Hello and welcome to Tights TV. Neil is here and I've got a new guest on. Uh, Daniel, it's great to have you on, mate. Uh, going to get your input and thoughts on things what's been happening over last week or two and looking forward as well. So great to see you, Daniel. Yeah, thanks for having me, Neil. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Uh, so, yeah, I think we're all like coming down off the eye from Sheffield Wednesday game, to be fair. Uh, what do you make of it? I mean, you know, people like saying the best performance is seen for, you know, a bounder side for many many years, probably going back to Ballyshmail when we got into playoffs. Yeah, I mean, you, you, I mean, what, what, a, what a positive, you know, result. You can't, you can't knock out, you can't knock out they performed, you can't, you know, and it's just, it, it feels, I think somebody put it quite, somebody put it quite, somebody put it quite well on one of the pages on Forever Red is that they, they want they cleared it uh, for the first time in a while. We actually cleared cleared Hillsborough, um, mm. and because uh, after that second goal went in, I think they lost complete hope of of getting anything out of the game. I think we defended really really well, um, and we shut them out. And I don't think they were used to that. Um, mm. In all honesty, um, it's I think from what has been. I know we're going to get onto this later, but. Uh, some people saw it as quite a disappointed transfer window. Hmm. There were a lot of the old, um, let's say, negativity coming back um, towards the owners. Um, I still think there's a there's a little bit of there is a lot of mistrust still hmm. um, that's underneath the surface. That resurfaced after we didn't get the striker that we wanted at transfer deadline day. Hmm. Uh, we saw that again across all all platforms regarding um, re uh, for Barnsley, but I think after that it would just went from it went from really negative to just completely positive and just said, you know, actually we mm -hmm. have got I have got faith we have got faith in these in this side to try and achieve some to try and achieve something and a lot of compliments going out to to Duff. Um, but also, uh, what I found quite nice is Mads Anderson got a lot of positive mm. uh, feedback, which, you know, I mean, after the season he had last season, didn't have a great season, you know, mm. and he went from sort of hero to zero sometimes. So it, I, I think it's great that he's got the comp, that he's getting the the uh, compl compliments he deserves. So that's great. Yeah, uh, just like going back on your friends and kind of leading to players, what we're going to be on about is that I think, like you said, across all platforms, we're all expecting a striker. Probably one, some like saying two, but I'd have been happy if we got one in. Mm. Uh, and I've also said before as well that I can see it being two, maybe three transfer wins before Duff gets his, I want to decide what his squad, but he wants because. When you look at what he had to take over from last season, it was a, a team long confidence, which has been relegated, obviously. The players were having to go. There's been a lot made about why do we have to make all this windfall straight away? Why can't we split over? So, you, you know, a lot of opinions on that, keeping shareholders happy and all that kind of stuff. But I can see the the best recruitment, what were made what, for me, what Duff getting man in. Um, you look at like what's happened to Asshole Banker Burton since after when he was supposed to be linked. So I think Duff Nard has got in, he's got his backroom staff and it, you know he's got Patterson. The foundations are starting to get built. And you look at the academy with Nick Eden and uh, Nick Colgan there. So you can see the foundation being put down. I just thought that next, I, I'd like to think that now yep. they've got the more or less, he knows what we're going to be working with. Apart from our player probably going out and loan here and there. But I'd like to think that come January, we're not a million miles away from it. And you know what they yeah. said, right? Do you want this? And they like backing kind of thing, if you know what I mean, with players. Yeah. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And I, I mean, I completely agree with everything <laughs> you've just said. I, I, I personally like how you've highlighted that, you know, you've we've got a couple of ex players in. Um, oh, we've got Nicky Edens with Bobby Assel's been there quite a while. Devane is obviously his assistant, his assistant manager, isn't he? Uh, it's like his third in command. It's like Duff, uh, I don't know, it's Duff, my passing, and Devaney, but it's like, yeah. I think Devane is that kind of first team coach, but he's also, he knows the younger players as well. So it's like that bridging gap in it kind of thing. Yeah. And I <laughs> think that, that that's it. And also, what we've got to look at as well, um, which is it, it's quite important. I think we've got a backroom staff that have played well. I know the 
played for the club, obviously, but we've got a backroom staff that understand supporters, what they want, yeah. what they what they look for in a performance. They look for hard work. Now, the big criticism from last season is that there wasn't hard work. There wasn't hard work. That there wasn't hard work. We could have done better. We could have, you know, we were mm. shying out of challenges. And from personally, I mean, you've probably watched Barnsley a lot longer than what I have. But well, what I've seen in the last 15 years is that Barnsley, you want a performance at 100%. And if you give 100% and you just miss out, that's fair. You yeah. know, I'm sure that people can forgive. But going back to uh, but going back to our performances, especially at Ipswich, Wednesday, we were co- we were on it constantly. Mm. Balls went over. I think apart from the Gregory chance, I don't really think Wednesday. I can't remember Wednesday no. having that bigger a chance of scoring. No. So I think we let us guard down a little bit with the Gregory chance, but th- that were a split second in a game where we were constantly we were chasing, we were running back, getting the ball. Luke O'Connell as well. Mm. He was con- he was throwing himself into challenges, and I think you can see the values of those, the value of having that backroom staff that understand what the fan, what the fans want, what we need to succeed, is essential. And I think that's only going to be that. that and obviously, we'll work. This, this will get fed back to the head coach, and hopefully, this is a sign of things getting better. Um, Actually, I believe it is getting the sign of getting things better. I think the only thing that we need to kind of bear in mind, and I, I hate being negative at this sort of time. It's more constructive than yeah, yeah, yeah. than being negative. We've had, um, we've we obviously played Plymouth. I think it's Plymouth, Wickham, Sheffield Wednesday, Ipswich. These are all sides that have been in the top. These been in the mm. top ten um, last season. Oh no, I think sorry. It, I can't remember who landed 11th out of them, but I think it might have been Ipswich. Ipswich landed 11th. We've got four points out of those games. Um, if we want to be challenging from that, con- it, the, the key has got to be the consistency in results. We've got to be making sure that we're getting points on the board and we're not having a, we're not repeating what happened, uh, what happened against Wickham, really. Mm. But I think at the moment, having watched us against Ipswich and watched us Sheffield Wednesday, signs are good, and hopefully this is a sign of us getting a bit of a run together and getting results on uh, getting the points on the board. Yeah, I mean, just like what you mentioned, via local Connells, uh, players have come in, and I think uh, Sheffield Wednesday game it kind of leads on to what you were saying with uh, teams and that is that I think the Wickham game were uh, vastly disappointed, and I think even Duff went out on records and said that. Some of them went one note down, body language weren't great, it had gone. Yeah. And it was more or less to try to change the formation, so just to try and stem flow. But I think from then, like you said, Ipswich, Sheffield Wednesday, it's more or less the same personnel, but is is getting some out of now, is getting the weight rate, the belief, the cons- you know, the, the mindset on the game, right from first whistle to end. I mean, you look at like the, the Ipswich town game, not not a great record, but good to come back twice. So again, your beliefs for you. Yeah, you look at like the the the, the impact on some of the players are making when they're coming in. I.e., you know, Matty Wolf's on bench. Yeah, when he comes on, he was a first team last year. So you think, right? You know, mate, you've got light for light. So you've got your Adam Phillips, your Josh Martin, uh, Tom Edwards. What have come in additions to the side? So it's bolt up that uh, squad, yeah. and we. I don't know what you're taking these, but the the players what came in. They look solid players, they're looking players that's going to improve. And I think it's what we needed because when you look at like what we've got coming up, we've got Portsmouth, then you've got midweek, then weekend, midweek, you've got a fair amount of games coming up. So it's it's that squad depth that you need, not just a team, in it. Yeah, it is. You know, that's, that's yeah, that's correct. I mean, just on the on the names that you've said, the, the Edwards, Adam Phillips, is Adam Phillips, is Adam yeah. Phillips, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, Adam Phillips, Josh Martin. <laughs> These are all quite. When we look at it, and I know I, I think we got very transfixed and got results pinned up on a striker coming in, and I think by accident um, we ignored what 
these players are. Adam Phillips Adam Phillips has got a good solid record at the clubs. He's been out on loan. Hmm. We've got Tom Edwards who were out at Slasberg, I believe. I think he probably I think he, was, yeah, I think it, I think he'd been Stoke. I think I, I think he had a stint in uh, under Struber as well in uh, MLS. That were it, MLS. Yeah. Sorry, not Slasberg. Yeah. Red Bull, uh, New Bull, New York Red yeah. Bulls were it. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so he's a very he's a very reputable player. He, he very much fits into our. Um, I'm going to say the swear word that were uh, the data model. Uh, let's call yeah. it that. He fits into that sort. He fits into that <laughs> area quite well. Um, which has paid off for us in the past. Let's not forget we signed Michael Ellick on the back of those sort of data, those data driven mm. Mm. things. So, you know, it does work. Um, and then we've got Josh Martin, who's who played, who was apparently one of the brightest ones at Doncaster last season. I know Doncaster didn't have as yeah. great a season last season, as, as well we know, but and not as fact, came, about... just yeah, just sorry, uh, Daniel, just on about that. Uh, when we signed him, he went under radar and Norwich City fans and Doncaster fans well, like messaging saying you've got a right player here because he'll be that mm. link up man between midfield and attack. I'm thinking, well, oh, really? And it's like yeah. you said, it must go under radar kind of thing. Yeah, and I, I, we have had a we have a decent reputation again, those sort of players. I remember Apo Alme when we signed him. I mean, obviously he had a lot of injuries, and you've got to feel sorry for the lad in that respect. Who I think he would have featured a lot more. But we Apo Alme Leeds were. Leeds United fans, I remember getting those messages and saying, "Oh, he's a good player. Mm. He is a good player, and he did get some vital goals for us when he came up, when he came on." And it's just a shame he didn't remain fit. Mm. But yeah, but yeah, so but yeah, back to our transfer window. I think obviously it's difficult. Like I said, and I still believe that unless Hickson gets this, is a good run of form for him. I don't know. I, I I I can't see it. And and Devante as well. I mean, let's not. Oh, you know, got, just on that, Devan- Daniel. That's a good one. Yeah. On on Hitchison, do you see him as a up front striker or that false number nine? Because at Forest Green, he were playing him that like floating role between midfield and uh, attack, and he were getting rave reviews. But for us, we seem to be putting him up alongside Devante Cole. Do you think yeah. he'd be playing be more sorted dropping back a bit? Because he likes running and pressing down and that. And I, I can see him in that position a bit deeper back rather than too far up pitch, if you know what I mean. Yeah, I, I, it seems like Devante's been doing that kind of job of kind of cutting short, mm-hmm. but then he but then you know Devante's got Devante seems to be out of the two of them has got the goals. I mean it's not yeah. it's not many, but he has got the goals. So I mean we we Hitchson, I think we, and I'm, no one's come out and said it publicly, but what I do believe is that Barnes is that he's the one that we are putting our faith into this season that he comes good. Mm. Mm. Um, I think we've seen enough at Forest Green to realise that we have got a good player there. I mean, whether he's... Well, It's difficult. It's difficult to say. I, I personally, we can't say. But, but then, is this down to a confidence thing with him? Mm. Is it down to a confidence thing where if he's oh, he might have got a good, he might have got a good couple of goals. He might have got a, oh, so he's got a goal against Ipswich. Play, um, and he's he's been playing well. Is this the sign that Akerson's going to be? This is a new role for him outside the one at Forest Green. I don't know. Mm. It's very difficult because. I think we go a lot on what performance anal- analysts say and what our scout, uh, what uh, what our scouting and and what the data shows from that. So unless you've got the kind of data in front of you that showed that you where you can see the potential of him being a strike uh, of being that coming out of that false nine role and Devante backing him up, then it's very difficult to say. But I mean. If I'm honest, Neil, I can only go on what the performance I've seen and what I've seen him. I think he's you. You've got a good player there. You've mm. got. A... And I think, like you said, V, I think confidence is a big thing. Liking players, and we'll come to like parts of game. I mean, they're going well. Uh, and we, yeah, they you know, are. You know, from old, you know, they've been in League One for a quite a bit. So, but the like seasoned in League One, so we'll know what it takes. Uh, 
We've got a couple of additions at transfer window as well. But for me, it's all about consistency. And it's like with players, you look at the Ipswich game, the Sheffield Wednesday game, you want to get back Wickham game like a one off. It might have been a kick up backside, but they needed. And like say, yeah, do you know what? A reality check. Mm. This is what we need to do. So going into the Portsmouth game, I mean, how do you see it going? A lot of people were saying, right, we need to be going for a win here. But again, it's not going to be a given. I, I get it with the home and we should be winning his own games. But with that as well, you've got a bit of pressure on. You know, there's more, you know, there's more fans, own fans, obviously. It's going to be a trip for Portsmouth. But uh, can you see that kind of going at a uh, weekend, Daniel? I mean, it, it's difficult. And I think that just, just slightly going back onto the transfer window to make mm-hmm. that point, we were both at the CEO meeting with, with Nareev. Mm-hmm. He wasn't saying that we're going to create a stable. We were, it wasn't going to be a stable season. It was as well we're going to re, re, regroup and then go for a promotion in in the year after. Or mm. he said, "I want this club back in the championship." So it's quite knowing what they knowing what the target says. Then that that's a very very clear to Arnold. I would imagine if that that's what Duff, the, you know, if that's what he's talking to fans, that's where that's if he's being truthful. Mm. There's a potential where he's just trying to market himself as the owner that's going to bring, you know, that where the, the sky, that. yeah, the skies are going to be blue and, and everything's <laughs> yeah. going to be okay. Mm. But if that's what he's, if that's what his genuine intention is, the big thing about going up from this league, as in winning any league, is getting a good home form. Mm. And. I think that if you're going to, you're going to have to have teams that, like Portsmouth, and it's not going to be easy. We need to, uh, one thing that we need to do, if we go a goal down, we're going to need to get behind them as supporters. Yeah. Yeah. Because that is going to happen. Because otherwise you end up with results like Wickham, mm-hmm. and we need to stop thinking. We need to try and get ourselves out of last season when we go a goal down. We need to go. Because every time we went a goal down last season, we thought, here we go. That's it. Yeah. You know, crowd went silent. Portsmouth are a good side. Um, but if we're going to need to get where we want to be, which is back in the championship, we're going to have to beat sides like them. If when we're away from home, you know, when we go to Fratton Park, I think it was only February, I believe, um, at Fratton mm. Park. Mm. If we come away there with a point, and they've got this. That's a good result. But making sure that home form is is as tight as it possibly can be, and as near to perfect is is important to get us back to the championship. It's going to be difficult, but if we perform like we did against Wednesday and Ipswich, I can't see any reason why we won't get three points. Yeah, uh, I think it. Yeah, I get where you're coming from with that, and I think with the you look at some blips we've had in season. Is like at Derby and Plymouth, and you can look and you'll think, yeah, do you know what? We took on some pretty decent sides as well in, in that. And the encouraging signs for me at this moment, I'm not getting carried away. I don't want to get too in fire in front, but is that I can see slight improvement coming through. I can see, you know, that m- more togetherness of a group. Now, whether it's, and someone mentioned this to me, and I didn't really think about it, to be fair, is that the saying that, now, do you think because Michael Duff's got his squad of players that he knows what he's working with, he's not got, you know, an elite going out or is he shopping or is he staying or now he knows what he's working with, mm. do you see that more togetherness in team? And I think, well, do you know what? I kind of do because you look on from, we come, like I said, we, we come back from uh, Ipswich away, a ground we haven't got a good record. People like saying even on Friday, you know, oh, we're going we're gonna to lose that. I, mm. like I said, if I come away with one apiece, I'd be happy a point. Yeah. But right from off, it was like, yeah, do you know what? We haven't really missed, no disrespect, but we haven't missed an Ellie Cobb. We haven't missed that styles. Because the team, what we're at there, was good at team performance. And I'm on yeah. about, not just individuals, but as a group, as a, as a team, a good team performance, as good I've seen for, I can't remember last time I saw it, years. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm wondering now, Duff has got, right, right this is what, you 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 bounce a player, there's nobody going, you mm. in it together. And I think if that's the case, 
then surely that must make the players feel more wanted and more trusted at manager. And it was yeah. poor players, isn't it? Well, I, I, I'm just going to put a name in there. <laughs> Josh Benson. Yeah. Now, I knew fans that completely wrote him off last season. They said he's not fit. He mm. can't be bothered. His attitude, he can't be bothered. His attitude's wrong. He don't run. He's not, uh, he's not brave enough, you know, and all these sorts of things. You've got to give credit from a for, to a player. Are you actually you've got to give it to the manager to start off yeah. with? Yeah. That says that hasn't come in with those opinions. That said, you know, okay, you're a player for Barnsley. I'm going to give you half a chance. I'm like going to give you the slate, chance. A clean yeah. slate, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and you could tell that he's done that. And and I have to say about Josh Benson. Again, I mean, a little bit inconsistent with his performances. Some did, some weeks he could, some weeks he's been brilliant, and other weeks he's been not so good. Mm. But I'd say overall, you know, we've been missing a player like that. I'd say since Alex Mowat went, mm. Mm. that put a tackle, put a strong tackle in midfield, attack. He's been able to jump. He's been able to take shots outside the box. We're a little bit more cut, and he, he's. Quite good. He's quite good at it, as you can yeah. remember from Bristol Rovers. Yeah. So that's showing that's showing the signs that the man that the manager is 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 really getting behind his players and really wants them to do well and 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 he's using all his resources, which is quite important for a club like us, you know. And I mean a club like us, as in where we haven't got the financial resources of the Derby yeah. counties. Or other clubs in the champ, or other clubs in the champ, in the championship. Hence, why we've we might have struggled in previous years. But yeah, so I do, I do get that. I, I, I do agree with your point about the togetherness and how important how important that is. Um, but we need to keep we need to keep it, and and that to, and I think that togetherness is going to be important when sides like Portsmouth are coming down to our ground and they don't fear us. Mm. That's that's mm. the big thing. Uh, um, we've, I, I hate to compare it, but you know, like we play here, like with Derby, they've got like Conor Urian in the squad. That's enough to make anybody scared. He's a good player, as we already know, and he's not, mm. lo- and I strongly believe he hasn't lost it um, off the years. He really mm. hasn't, from what I've seen of him anyway. But, with us, we have got those those players that are still improve. It is still improving and still growing. So when Portsmouth forgot when Portsmouth going to come down to you, they're, they're going to be saying, "Listen, we're not. You know, we don't fear you. You're just another side to us, and mm. we need to show that. No, we're not. We're not yeah. another side. We are going to. And you know, if they go one nil up, we're going to need to say, "All right then, but it ain't over. Yeah, it ain't over yet, and we're going to come back fighting at you." That's when your togetherness and your uh, and your determination comes in, and I think that and I and I hopefully that is something that we're we're seeing under Michael Duff. Yeah, I think it's a good point to uh, rest on that. I mean, I think a lot of us, a lot of teams are going to be think, looking at bounds and saying, "Yeah, they've just come down. It's going to be a scalp for them. A lot of unknowns in there." But I think if we can go about as business under radar and surprise a few people, and we'll say, "Yeah, you know what." We've had a result against, say, Chef Wednesday. We've had a result, say, against Portsmouth. You know what? We've got some players in there. And you best be on your guard. And I can see probably come, you like to say, come to January. Um, positions are more or less sort of the out. And a lot of like, sides will have been like saying, yeah, do you know, these are a bit of a, a dark horse. Because you're always going to get yeah. some kind of a dark horse in league. So thanks for joining like... me, John. Yeah, yeah. Here, 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 mate, go on. Yeah, he's just on final point. Don't just yeah. copy the Stendhal method, I would say. That's yeah. the best way. They would say that by the end of the season, we were when we went to play uh, and when we went to South, when we went, went to places like South End, we went away from home and we that confidence would be and you, part of that confidence, you could tell sides was completely terrified of us. Yeah. And and that's when we were starting to get good results, three nil to three nil, four nil, two nil away from home. Those points were very, very important towards uh, for us at the end of the season when we when we got promoted. Um, so yeah, keep up the. Uh, so uh, I hope Duff gets his inner Daniel Stendel. Let's say. Uh... <laughs>
<laughs> we'll leave it on that. So, <laughs> Duff guesses in a Daniel Stendel. That's what we yeah, want. Yeah, in a uh, Daniel, not in me, a, in a Daniel. Daniel Stendel. Yeah. <laughs> so, Daniel Sims, it's been great to have you on, mate. Uh, hope to have you on more often and more frequent as well for insights and stuff like that and previews and uh, after match thoughts as well. So, probably get you on after Portsmouth Cave sometime, mate, when you're free and available. We'll have a discussion about that. It's been a pleasure, Neil. Thank you very much for having me on. I appreciate it. No problem. One thing I have to say, you Reds. You Reds, definitely. <laughs>